Hey, and welcome to Latter-day Divers, where we dive into the words of ancient and modern prophets. My name is Will Perez, and I've got a question for you. What do the Chosen, Salt, and Doctrine and Covenants sections 81, 82, and 83 have in common? Well, that's what we're jumping into today. Okay, so my wife told me that I was rocking back and forth way too much in the last video, so I will try to be very still on this one. I just get really excited about this stuff. So this is episode three of You Missed This. Please take the time to subscribe, share the video if you haven't already, and if you are ready, then let's dive. So two blasts of dive alarm, password dive, dive. Dive, dive. So this isn't a paid endorsement or anything. I'm not that cool. I just really like the show The Chosen about the Savior and his followers. And in the last episode, the Savior kind of goes into detail about his salt of the earth metaphor in a way that really resonated with me. So here it is. Salt preserves meat from corruption. It slows its decay. I want my followers to be a people who hold back the evil of the world. Salt also enhances the flavor of things. I want my followers to renew the world and be part of its redemption. Salt can also be mixed with honey and rubbed on the skin for maladies. I want my people to participate in the healing of the world, not its destruction. Now, I've often heard the salt of the earth metaphor explained as purity and preserving food from corruption and enhancing flavor, but the concept of salt being used to heal really struck a chord with me. As I pondered the invitation from the Savior for us to be the salt of the earth, an invitation from the master healer for us to heal others and to engage in making the world a better place, I saw the same beautiful theme in the sections that we studied this week. In sections 81 to 83, I saw a savior inviting us to help hold back the evil over the world, to help renew it and redeem it and participate in healing it. So many of the verses in these sections turn us outward. The things the Lord commanded Jesse Goss in section 81, whose name was then replaced by Frederick G. Williams, whose name can then be replaced by yours and mine, were given so that in doing these things, thou wilt do the greatest good unto thy fellow beings. It wasn't about Frederick. The Lord's reasons for a united order in section 82 were so that we might be equal, that every man may improve upon his talent, that every man may gain other talents. Indeed, every man and woman seeking the interest of his neighbor, and doing all things to glorify God. When was the last time you sought the interest of your neighbor? Sometimes I'm more busy being annoyed about where they parked. <sighs> so as the salt of the earth, this seasoning on humanity, we can lift and heal others, right? What better way to do this than by extending what has been called the healing ointment of forgiveness? First of all, all of you and me have sinned, but also the Lord reminds us that we are forgiven inasmuch as ye have forgiven one another your trespasses. When we extend forgiveness, we participate in the healing of the world. It is in this spirit that we, like Frederick G. Williams, are appointed to succor the weak, lift up the hands which hang down, and strengthen the feeble knees. When I think about how much the Savior has forgiven me and strengthened me and succored me, the verse that says, unto whom much is given, much is required, takes on a little deeper meaning. The salt of the earth needs to engage with the earth. We are even advised to make unto ourselves friends with the mammon of unrighteousness. <laughs> President Joseph Fielding Smith explained that it is not intended that in making friends of the mammon of unrighteousness that the brethren were to partake with them in their sins and otherwise come down to their level. They were to so live that peace with their enemies might be assured they were to treat them kindly, be friendly with them, as far as correct and virtuous principles would permit. Now, it is so easy to keep the salt to yourself, but nobody is healed, redeemed, or renewed when we do that. On the other hand, have you ever used too much salt? Sometimes the early saints struggled to make friends because they were a little boastful, exclusive, and maybe even a little self-righteous at times. If you're at risk of being too salty, then just stop it. Okay, time out. Am I even making any sense? All I wanted to do was highlight a beautiful description of the invitation for us to be the salt of the earth, show what that means our role in humanity is, and demonstrate how these sections in the Doctrine and Covenants clearly point us outwards and help us to fulfill that role by focusing on others 
instead of just focusing on ourselves. And it's actually a beautiful tribute to who the Lord himself is and who he invites us to be. Even in section 83, we get another concise reminder of our duty to care for the poor and needy. I think this section can be summarized by James 127. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. So in a world where so many people seem to be only focused on The Lord invites us to be the salt of the earth, to be team players, and to seek the interests of our neighbor. Ah, this is so hard! And I know it's way easier said than done, but we can do it together because of who he is and because of what he's already done. Well, thank you for diving with me today and for even gracing this channel with your presence. Please subscribe if you haven't already, and let me know of any other gospel dives you'd like to see on here. And I will catch you next Friday on episode four of You Missed This.